Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and put your hands together. This is the day the Lord has made. We come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Thank you all for joining us on this morning. We pray that you find it a blessing and you worship with us again. Please go ahead and share this broadcast on your social media pages. Let us pray. Lord God, we come right now to say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for watching over us last night. Lord God, we thank you for our early rising this morning. Lord God, we thank you for keeping us safe throughout this week. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us to a, through another Thanksgiving. We have so much to be thankful for. So on today, Lord God, we lift our hands in thanksgiving, Lord God, with the praise in our hearts, on our lips, Lord God. We come to reverence you, Lord God, for you are worthy to be praised. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for protecting us, Lord God, for keeping us safe. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping our families safe, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for protecting us as we go, Lord God, to our jobs, Lord God, to our designated areas, Lord God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us, that keeps us safe, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your protection, your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for forgiving us, Lord God, of our wrongdoing, Lord God. We are not worthy, Lord God, but you forgive us, Lord God, and you give us another chance. And for that, we say thank you. Lord God, on today, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. You're welcome into our homes, Lord God. You're welcome into our lives. Move like never before in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Whatever we've been going through, what all the, all the burdens we've been carrying, Lord God, throughout this week, we lay them at your feet, Lord God. We lay them on the altar, Lord God, for we know that you care, and we cast them upon you, Lord God, for you to carry our heavy loads. Lord God, those who are dealing with sickness in their bodies, Lord God, we know you to be a healer. So we thank you right now in advance for healing their bodies. Those who are dealing with COVID-19 in the name of Jesus, we thank you in advance for healing their bodies. Those who are dealing with bereavement, Lord God, in advance, Lord God, we thank you right now for comforting those families, Lord God, for giving the peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you right now. Lord God, this worship service, we lift it up and it belongs to you, Lord God, so have your way on today. Bless the man of God that's going to stand before us, Lord God. Bless him in a special way, Lord God. We thank you for his obedience and his sacrifice. We got the week, Lord God. He stand before us, Lord God. So we ask that you just bless him right now. Give him, give him the strength that he needs, Lord God, to do your assignments. Lord God, we thank you for our Cedar Creek Community Church, our family and friends, Lord God. And we thank you for what you're doing, for what you've already done and what's yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen.
doors forever. Come on, let's thank Him. Hallelujah. Come on, give Him all the glory. Give Him all the honor. Come on, give Him all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, give it to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says we give you all the glory. Hallelujah. We worship you. You are Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Come on into the house, wherever you are. Open up your mouth right now and give God glory. Hallelujah, 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 Lord, we bless your name, we give you glory, hallelujah, Lord, you are good, 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 Lord, you are good.
series entitled Prepare. Title Prepare. Title Prepare. Luke chapter 1. And I'm going to start at the fifth verse. Luke chapter 1. And I'm reading from the got so many Bibles I got to make sure I read from the King James Version today. Mm -hmm. 
Luke chapter 1. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Amen. It says, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the cause of Abiah and his wife was the daughter of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child because the, that Elizabeth was barren and they were both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of the course, according to the customs of the priest's office, he, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of the incense. And these, excuse me, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. And, but the angel said, fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and as many shall receive, excuse me, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee, and to show these things glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak. Until that day these things shall be fulfilled, because thou believest not my word, which shall be fulfilled in their season. I want to talk from the topic of the day, prepare for your miracle. Amen. Prepare for your miracle. Miracle. Um, you know, this Thanksgiving was a little different, and we weren't able to go out. Some people still went out, but the back, it's not, well, it's not back to school, but the Black Friday shopping experience was a little different this time. But you know, every year, it's a, a, a madhouse, a race to go get these certain things um, after Thanksgiving at these sales. And so, but the, you should, you can just see some people who, I go out there just if I do just to be known to see what everybody else is doing. <laughs> and it's, I, it's not, most of them I can get online. Like a lot of us shopped online. But you can see, especially when you go to certain stores, people have their focus on one thing. I'm going to this store for this particular thing and I'm going to get this. I'm not getting nothing else and I'm not going to spend all day. I'm coming to get this one deal or buy this TV that I already bought one last year but I need to get another one. This year I got to get another crop pot or something like that. Something we probably don't need but we're focused on that one thing. And you can really see the intensity in some of their eyes when they're zeroing in on what they are there for. They are zeroing in on the purpose for which the day after Thanksgiving must have been given to us to shop. That's what we only feel like that's our day to shop. Mm -hmm. And we often live our lives with a similar kind of focus. Mm -hmm. We pursue with intensity our daily grind. We, we get into a routine of living and we just live with full effort. Sometimes we get so focused on the daily life that we forget to keep our eyes peeled for the miraculous. Mm -hmm. We, we, we see everything so much, the same thing over and over again, that our eyes are closed to the things that God is trying to do to blow our minds. You see, God is trying to do something to show you that he is real. See, some of us, we have just gotten so used to God waking us up every day, we don't realize that's a miracle. But if you that's show right. me every day, when you look at the statistics, glory to God, and you see that people are dying at an alarming rate, people every day, the numbers go higher and higher. You got to thank God in the morning for the miracle which he is life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we need to open our eyes to the possibility that there is more to life 
than simply surviving. Amen. Some of us, we just surviving, but it's more than that. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's more than that. Hallelujah. Lord. It's more than just going to work day to day. It's more than enough just to make enough money to pay the bills. It's more than enough just to get back. No, it's more to that. That's why Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We are not living, living mediocre, no, mediocre no more. We're not just living average no more. God wants to do more than that. So open up your eyes and get ready for what God is about to do in your life. We need to open up our lives. There is a miraculous level of living as well. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me say that one more. There is a miraculous level of living. You got to expect God to do something crazy yeah. in your life. You got to expect God to do above what you can ask or think. Quit reading the word and not believe in the word. Amen. Just as the children of Israel in the wilderness became hard to their daily miracles of life, so do we. Mm -hmm. We feel like God obligated to do something. Mm -hmm. He ain't obligated to do nothing. That's right. He did it. Why? Because he loved us. He wasn't obligated to send Jesus to die for us, but he did it because he loved us. Thank you, Lord. So, so we got to get our minds right mm -hmm. and prepare. Get ready. Make ready. Make room for the miraculous to happen. But somebody said, I still believe in miracles. I still believe, I still believe in miracles. And, and so, Zechariah and Elizabeth have been believing God for this for so long that they got so used to what they was doing and they didn't see what God was going to do in their life and it didn't happen in their time. So they didn't, they just didn't forget about God, but they didn't expect it to happen. Mm -hmm. Because when the angel came to Zechariah, he was frightened. Because he didn't expect God to do what he'd been praying for. But the, he had an angel who knew exactly what he had been praying for. And the angel came from God with the word. He gave him six specific promises to Zechariah in his past. He says, your prayers are going to be answered. He says, God has been gracious or God has shown favor. The name of John, that's what the name of John means. He says, you and your people will know joy and gladness. Your child is going to be great. Israel will see national revival, and your child is the forerunner to the soon coming Messiah. So all of this stuff, they hadn't seen yet. We, I've been praying, but I haven't seen an answer to my prayer. I, I, I love God, but I haven't seen his favor just yet. Uh, uh, God, I haven't seen your joy just yet, because you have to realize during this time that God had been silent. They had been, they, God had been silent and, and he had stopped speaking because Israel had turned their backs on to God. But because God loved us, hallelujah, he loved Israel, he was going to send them a revival through yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. But he said this, he said, your child is going to be great and he's going to be the forerunner to the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But with all these promises, Zechariah still doubted God. He responded by essentially saying, give me more evidence and then I will believe. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Give me more evidence and then I believe. This is much like the Israelites who crossed the Red Sea on dry land. Mm -hmm. Then when Moses went to receive the Ten Commandments, they forgot God mm -hmm. and shaped a golden calf. It's also like the rich man who begged Abraham to send Lazarus back from the grave to, the, to witness to his brothers. It's also like Thomas who demanded from Jesus more than verbal affirmation, but wanted the visible evidence to know that Jesus was real. All are cases in which people demanded more evidence than the plain promises of God. God is saying, what else do I have to do to get you to believe? Because God says, I've I put it in my word, but you doubt me. I'm the one that did all this other stuff, but just because I haven't done this one thing you've been praying for, you doubted me. What else do I have to do to make you believe? I'm going to do it. 
for yourself and that you need to truly rely on God, then you can get out of the way for God to make a miracle in your life. Amen. You can't answer your own prayers. Go ahead and get that in your mind. You can't show yourself favor. Hallelujah. Your right. joy does not come from yourself. Your joy comes from the Lord. Yeah. You can't make your children great. All you got to do is pray and ask God to do it. You can't yeah. give your own yeah. soul yeah. revival. God has to give you that. And you do not have your own savior. Jesus is your savior. So even though you haven't seen it yet, don't think that God can't do it. Amen. You see, God wants us to rely on him. That's why many of the promises seem like they are miracles. Yes, a miracle is something that only God can do. Mm -hmm. It's something that only God can do. And so, and we insult God when we try to work the miracle ourselves. Yeah, we, we, we insult God when we try to work the miracles ourselves. And see, but God wants to show you that you got to put it all on me. Amen. Amen. God wants to show you that you have to fully rely on me because I have not seen it happen yet. Does not mean that God cannot do it. Let me say that one more time Amen. for somebody that's watching. Just because it has not happened yet does not mean that God can't do it. Even Amen. though it ain't happened yet, you got to still get ready for it. Glory to God. Even though it ain't come yet, you still got to get ready for what God is about Amen. to do in your life. Somebody shout, I got to prepare. I got to prepare for what God is going to do in my life. God, you see, you see, because you got to believe. You got to trust and believe that God is God. Amen. And you got to believe that God can do anything. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because anything that God talks about, anything that God tells you he's going to do, because he did it, it's going to be a miracle. Mm -hmm. And you got to be a believer and so God can do it and grab hold to it. This is my promise. Hallelujah. This is my miracle. Hallelujah. I'm grabbing hold of it. And you got to say, God can do anything. Hallelujah. God can do anything but fail. So that's why the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because I know you've been praying for a miracle and every time you open your eyes, you don't see it in your own eyes. But maybe you got to start looking by faith and say, God, I see it. Hallelujah. I might not have it just yet, but I see it. I might not yeah. have it in my hand just yet, but I see it by faith. We walk by faith and faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Even though I don't see it, that don't mean it's still out there. Even though I don't have it, that don't mean that God is not going to bring it to me, so I've got faith, so that's how I'm walking. Close your eyes and open up your faith eyes, glory to God, and say, Lord, I've got faith, so I can believe that you are going to work a miracle in my life, so some of you need to change the way you walk. I'm not talking about how you step. I'm talking about the way you see when you walk. You got to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So basically, this text tells us how to prepare for the miraculous. The first thing we got to do is live life on call for God. Live life on call for God. Verse 6, it tells us, and it says, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and the ordinance of the Lord, blameless. See, here's the amazing thing about Zechariah and Elizabeth. So we should discredit them all the way. Because we look at sometimes stuff happening in people's lives and we think they don't love God. They don't mean they don't love God. Sometimes we do have doubt. Just because you have doubt, that doesn't mean you don't love God. Just because sometimes you wave in your faith, that doesn't mean you, wave, you don't love God. That just means you're human. That's right. But you got to keep believing. Mm -hmm. And it says, so even though they weren't seeing anything miraculous, they were still living faithful, godly lives. Like I said, Israel was in the midst of 400 silent years with no prophecy, no recorded angelic announcements, and no significant miracles to speak of. Yet, we still have these two people living faithful to God. Don't allow God's absence in what you see to keep you from serving him. Amen. Right. Just because he ain't did it the way you want him to do it, that don't mean I'm throwing in the towel. God didn't heal me the way, so I, I'm quitting the church. I, I ain't going to church no more because all that stuff they've been saying, it ain't true. Baby, it is true, but you got to get yeah. off of God's, put, get God off of your calendar, and you got to get on his schedule right. and Amen. believe that God is going to do it when you need him. Well, there's no fan there where nobody is watching, but there is room to look forward to tomorrow. Do we continually live faithful for God? 
ready to respond at any moment. Mm -hmm. These people that have been praying for a while and it still had not happened, but they were still serving God. Amen. When you serve them when you're broke. Jesus. When you serve them when they stop calling your name. When you serve them when, when you get sick in your body. You know, we get a headache, we don't want to do nothing. We get, uh, we get a little cough, we can't do nothing. But when you still serve God. Because you have to remember that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So I'm just coming to tell somebody, stay on call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is an on-call job. Hallelujah. Me and Minister Jesus were just talking about that earlier. Hey, you being on call and sometimes you don't call, you're like, please don't let them call me. Please, I don't want you got to be on call. And you're like, every time I look around when I'm on call, somebody want to call out. Every time I'm on call, somebody don't want to come in. But God said you got to be up so ready. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I'm coming to tell everybody in this place, everybody watching, we all got our own call job. Because God, when yeah. He calls, you got to answer. You got to be like the, the prophet said, Send me, Lord, I'll go. So you can't just give up because it's not your time. Hallelujah. You can't just give up just because your name ain't on the program. You can't just give up because your shift is over. Yeah. You got to be ready and keep working. In season and out of season, you got to keep working. Rain, sleet, snow. Hallelujah! You got to keep working when you're sick and when you're well. Keep working and prepare. Hallelujah! You got to prepare for your miracle. Jesus, prepare for your miracle. Stay on call. Stay on call. The fact, second thing that you got to do, you got to refuse to let ministry become bored, mm -hmm. become mundane. Verse 8 and 9, it says that, and it came to pass that while he was, he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Let me teach you a moment. There were approximately 20,000 priests divided into 24 courses of ministry, each serving two eight-day periods of time during the year. Each of them had a scheduled work time. Each course consists of about 830 men. They get to burn incense. To get to burn incense was a once in a lifetime opportunity for Zechariah. It was a special occasion, but it was nothing compared to what God wanted to do in that once in a lifetime moment. Mm -hmm. You see, but Zechariah seems so into the momentum of doing his duty that he failed to realize the significance of the experience. You see, ministry, if we're not careful, may become mundane to us, may become routine to us, and the miraculous may become commonplace. Mm -hmm. We get to the point where we just go through the motions of life, and we forget how significant it is to put the flowers on the table, mm -hmm. to visit the hospital, to sing in the choir, to, to usher, to call the sick. We, we just figure that, well, since I, I've been doing it so long, it ain't nothing to do, but you gotta realize Everything you do for God is important. Amen. Everything you do for God is, is, is pleasing in his sight as long as you are doing it for him. Yes. Don't miss the moment. All right. Don't be too busy working for the Lord that you miss him. Uh -huh. don't, don't get too busy doing God's work that you forget about God. Hallelujah. Don't forget, don't get too busy working for the church that you forget the one who built this church. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church in the gates of hell but not prevail. See, that's the problem. We get so busy doing church stuff. Uh -huh. <coughs> and we make that make us think that we're a good Christian. Mm -hmm. Just because, yeah, I went down here every day to Oh, I've been there for the last 40 years. I've been working and nobody else ain't there. I've been there. Well, guess what? If your heart ain't in it, God don't care how long you've been down there. That's right. He don't care what all you've done. If your heart was not in it. He said, yeah, you was at the church when I came through. You missed me. Hallelujah. You was at the hospital but when I came through. You missed me. You was calling people when I tried to call you. You missed me. You was too busy trying to do my work that you forgot about me. Life gets hectic. But don't miss God. Amen. Instead of missing him, you need to find him. Oh, Amen. God. That's why Jeremiah 29 and 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. So I come to tell you today, put your heart in ministry and you will find God every time. Amen. I know it's a lot, but make sure your heart is in it because when your heart is in it, I, it, it, it won't seem like a burden no more. You will, you said, you will be like, I was glad when they said it to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why? Because my heart is in it. Because I know I might be tired of coming to
the same every week, but my heart is in it. I know each time I get here, God's got some blessing for me. I know I'm tired of going to check on the sick and the shut in, but I know if I go with my heart, God gonna see me when I go check on them. I'm tired of calling and praying for people, and nobody ain't calling and praying for me, but because my heart in it, the intercessors are praying for me, and I ain't even know it. I'm tired of giving to the needy, and I needed myself, but because my heart was in it, it just when I didn't think I was gonna do it, God would pay a bill out of nowhere. I'm here to tell you, keep searching for God with your whole heart, and God's gonna reward you for everything that you're doing, because when you work for Him, you are preparing Him to work for you. Let me say that one more time. When you work for God, you are preparing God to work for you. You are moving your stuff out of the way and making yourself available for God to work a miracle in your life. But just don't miss God in the midst of your work. Amen. Don't miss God in the midst of your work. So you got to live life on call for God. You got to refuse to let ministry become boring. Third, you got to keep praying with persistence. Verse 13, it says, but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Here again is another great thing to notice about Zechariah. He kept praying in spite of the lack of an answer. Let me say that one more time. Zechariah kept praying in spite of the lack of an answer. He kept praying, Jesus. even though the thing that he hadn't prayed, kept praying for hadn't shown up yet. Mm -hmm. He kept praying, even though year after year his wife never got pregnant. He kept praying year after year. He started seeing all the people around him having children. Year after year they kept getting older and older and nothing happened, but he kept praying. I'm here to tell you, you got to keep on praying. That's why the Bible says the effectful and preferred prayers of the righteous availing much. If you want to see God work a miracle in your life, keep praying. Hallelujah. I know you've been praying for a new child all year long, but God said don't stop praying. I know you've been praying for a new house for the last two years, but God said, don't stop praying. I know you've been praying for a new relationship for a long time, but God says, don't stop praying. Keep praying and keep believing. Keep praying and keep trusting. Keep praying and know that God is going to show up in your life. Don't stop praying. Hallelujah. Just keep on praying. Hallelujah. I said, for the Lord is now. Just keep on praying, hallelujah. He'll hear your cry. I said, the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Just keep on praying, and he'll answer you. I tell you, keep praying. You might be 80 years old, and been praying for something for the last 60 years, but I heard God said it's coming sooner rather than later. I know you've been praying, and you're tired of praying, but pray for more strength. So keep on praying some more. Hallelujah. God, don't let me get tired of praying. Because I need an answer from the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm going to keep on praying. I may not see it on Monday, but I'm going to still pray on Tuesday. I may not see it on Wednesday, but I'm going to pray again on Thursday. I may not see it on Saturday, but I'm going to pray again on Sunday. It didn't happen last week, but I'm praying this week. It didn't happen last month, but I'm going to keep praying this month. It didn't happen last year, but I'm going to keep praying. That's what's sooner, rather than later, any day now, God's going to do what he promised you to do. So church, keep on praying. I said keep on praying. Keep on praying. You may have doubted it, but keep praying. You may not know if it's going to happen, but keep praying. You may not see it, but keep praying. Faith will make you get on your knees. Hallelujah. You're looking for an answer, make you get on your knees. You don't have to call nobody for this answer. Just keep praying to God, and he will answer you. He will answer you. That's why Luke 10, 11 and 10 is written in this continuous sense. He says that whoever keeps on asking, whoever keeps seeking, mm -hmm. whoever keeps knocking will be answered. Yes. Hallelujah. So, so we got to live life on call for God. 
You got to refuse to let ministry become mundane. You got to keep praying with persistence. And the last thing you got to do is believe that God's word is enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Believe that God's word is enough. Verse 18 says, and Zacharias, uh, God, the, 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 Gabriel had given him all these promises. And the golden again, he said, your prayers will be answered. God will give you favor. You and your people will know joy and gladness. Your child is going to be great. Israel will see a national revival. And your child will be a forerunner to the soon coming sight. And after all that, Zechariah said unto him, How am I, Lord, is going to happen? I'm an old man. And my wife is just as old as I am. How in the world, God, at this point, we're going to get pregnant? At this point, how are we going to do it? And Gabriel probably looking at him like, now, I just gave you all these promises. Mm -hmm. And I told you who I was from. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Don't you the messenger. <laughs> just believe. Amen. Uh -huh. Sometimes we don't want the message because who's coming. That's from. right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. God has given somebody a word for your life because but, but you're just looking at what they might have done back then mm -hmm. or what, who this person is or how it's wrapped up. Don't look at it. Come sometimes the gift is deceiving. That's right. And when you open it up on the inside, you will see that God's got something special for you. Amen. So don't discard the messenger. Just take the message. Because God's got a word for your life. And the word is that I'm going to do just what I said I was going to do. But Gabriel said, okay, I'm Gabriel. And I come in the presence of God. And he sent me to tell you this. And to show these glad tidings, the good news. I come to give you good news, but you don't want to receive it. And just because of that, you're not going to be able to say nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close your mouth, and when it happens, that's when you'll be able to speak again. Mm -hmm. Because I told you what I was going, what God was going to do. Mm -hmm. And your response should have been, yes, Lord. But you had others, you trying to figure out well, how I'm going to see it. See, that's what we got to do. See, Jesus, he, he condemned the religious leaders of his day because they demanded a sign. They got, I, God, you got to show me a sign. The problem is not that we are seeking to know God's will more surely, but rather that we are demanding for evidence from God's very own word. Mm -hmm. This is really the crime of Zechariah. He hears the message of God through Gabriel and demands more. So often we hear and understand what God is saying about something, yet we won't believe it until we hear more. Mm -hmm. We got to get another source. Amen. We got to get somebody else to confirm what God says. I don't need a confirmation from nobody else. Right. I believe what God says. If a confirmation right. comes over, that's just icing on the cake. But I believe the word of Amen. God. Yes. You see, we demand greater evidence than what God is willing to give. We must learn the simple truth that God's word is enough. His say is the final say. Amen. Who has the final say? God has the final say. Hallelujah. It's time to start believing what you have been praying. Mm -hmm. Let me say that one more time. It's time to start believing what you have been praying for. Yeah. You've been praying for healing, but do you believe that he can heal? Because when the healing comes, you ain't going to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. You've been praying for a breakthrough, but can you do we believe that God's truly going to do it for you? Because when the breakthrough is in front of you, you don't know how to receive it. You've been praying for God to do something miraculous in your life, but the miracle is right in front of you, but you can't see it because you don't believe it. You got to believe that God is able to do exactly what he said he was going to do. And those of us with kids, we know kids often bargain with us. Mm -hmm. When we say no to something, they begin to reason with us or try to lay claim to some territory. Get this long explanation. But mama, uh, uh, daddy, it's because of this and, and so and so and so. But I really think in all this, this but still the answer will still be no in your mind. But they figure if I can just say something else. I can persuade them to change their mind. Mm -hmm. We do the same with God. He says yes or no to something, and we keep arguing. Mm -hmm. God, I know you said no to a new house right now, but God, I, but if you let me get it, you know, I'll work a couple extra hours or <laughs> I'll get another job to pay. God, I know that you don't like to go into the job you got right now, so why would he give you something that you don't need two jobs for? Yeah. He said, oh, God, I, I just need this new car. But God said, you don't put gas in the one you got here. You didn't pay the taxes. It was late last year. You missed a couple payments. So no, you got to keep the one you got. You said, but God, I... I, I I want to get married, but God said, you couldn't even handle the relationship that I gave you before. Neither one of y'all knew what y'all were doing. Both of y'all was crazy, but God said, I need you to sit and rest because 
No, God, but then when God says yes, go out and do this and then but God, I ain't got time to do this. So God trying to say, when I tell you yes, you don't want to do it. When I tell you no, you still want to do it. God says, what are you going to do? Are you going to trust me enough to do what I said? You see, we even try to reinterpret his words and we explain them for a new generation. In doing so, we often call the questions of the sufficiency of scriptures, but God's word is enough. Amen. This is all that we need. You see, Zachariah was unwilling to believe in the clearly revealed word of God concerning his future. What have you believed about God's promises to you for your life? What are you believing God for? What did God promise you? And see, what happens is if you believe God, he's going to do something for you. Amen. Zachariah's name means the Lord remembers. And John's name means the Lord favors. And so because Zacharias did what God told him to do, God remembered the promise that he gave them. And because the promise didn't happen during that time, his faith, he got a little weary. But because God promised it, he had to fulfill it. So I come to tell somebody today, you got a miracle waiting for you. Yeah. There's a miracle waiting for you. I know it hasn't happened in your time, but God is always on time. And so because Zacharias finally got his mind together and because Elizabeth received the blessing, Elizabeth received what God had gave her. They, God favored them and gave them John, which means the Lord favors. Hallelujah. So I've come to tell somebody today that God remembers you and because he remembers you, he's about to favor you. Hallelujah. God's about to bless you. God says, I've seen your cry. I've heard your cry. I've seen your work. You kept the faith. You kept believing in me. Hallelujah. Yeah. You didn't give up. Hallelujah. You kept coming to church. Hallelujah. Even when you didn't feel like it, you kept praying for the sick. Even when you didn't feel like it, because you knew that God had a blessing waiting for you. You kept your heart in ministry. You kept, you stayed on call. Whenever I called your name, you said, Lord, I will go. You didn't get bored doing the work of the Lord. You didn't miss me when I was coming through. You kept praying in season and out of season. And you believed
to go to the one I got right now on time and do the work. God's going to heal me. I got to pay attention to the doctors and live a healthy life. I'm preparing for the miracle. I'm ready for God to do what he said he was going to do. I don't know about you, but I'm ready.
you went through the struggle, but what you got uh, when you delivered that baby made you forget about uh, all of the hell you went through, uh, all of the struggle you went through. All you wanted the doctor to do was to hand you your baby. Let me see what the Lord has done in your life. Uh, I've come to tell you, you're about to deliver soon, uh, and you're not going to worry about uh, what you had to go through the process. Uh, you're not going to worry about uh, all the pain you had to feel. All you're going to do is say, God, let me see my miracle. Let me hold my breakthrough. Let me hold my deliverance. And you're going to look at it and say, look what uh, the Lord has done. All I see is joy. All I see is favor. So get ready to deliver. The miracle that God has placed inside of you. Thank you, Lord. I heard the Lord just say, I've already placed a miracle inside of you. You wait for me to deliver God, said, I'm waiting for you to push glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. God said, I'm waiting for you to push. God said, I ain't doing no C-section. I ain't taking it out. You can push this one out. Hallelujah. You can push this one out. God said, I need you to push. That means pray until something happens. That means praise until something happens. I know you ain't seen it yet, but God put it on the inside of you. It's coming. You just got to push. Hallelujah. It's coming. You just got to push. Hallelujah. Keep on praying. Keep on praising. Keep on worshiping. Keep on shouting. Hallelujah. Every time you push, give a glory. Every time you push, clap your hands. Every time you push, shout hallelujah. Keep pushing. And I'm here to tell you, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Do you believe that God put something on the inside of you? Get ready to receive. Thank you, Lord. Get ready to receive. Your miracle. And guess what? The baby came. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth had the baby. And I don't want to get too much ahead because it goes with some mm -hmm. other part. But everything God said he was going to do, mm -hmm. he did. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everything God said he was going to do, he did. All because you didn't stop looking. For the miracle. Anybody believe God today? Yes. Anybody believe God today? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Do you trust Him? We got to believe that we see. Yes. God is going to do it today. Hallelujah. I'm looking for a
So God, I thank you that I kept the faith. I thank you that I kept praying. I thank you that I stayed on call. And I thank you that I believe your word is all I need. So God, do it for me right now. Make a way out of no way, God. Work a miracle in my life. I thank you, God, that I can trust you enough to know that it's on the way. The process might be hard, but God, the end result is going to be better than what I went through. Hallelujah. The product is greater than the process. So I thank you today, hallelujah, for the finished product because joy is coming back to me. God, I thank yes, you today. Thank you, Lord. And I can't wait to hear, God, from the saints just what you have done in yes, your life, their you. lives. So work a miracle, Lord. Be a miracle worker for everybody. Amen. Because it is so. It is well. And it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. amen. Come on and give God praise if you believe it to be a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Join us this Wednesday for Bible study. We thank God that he's continued to work a miracle in each one of our lives. So we thank you that he is doing exactly what he said he was going to do. So we trust you and we believe in God to do what he said he's going to do. Let this week be the week of miracles. Hallelujah. Yeah. Open your eyes and look for a miracle this week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're looking for miracles. Hallelujah. Look for your miracle and let me know just what God has done in your life. Be blessed to the creek. Walk in favor. Walk in victory and walk into your miracle. Walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. The miracles don't come to you. Hallelujah. Believe it and receive it that God will perform it today. Be blessed in Jesus' name. We love you. Bye-bye. Amen.